chapter 18. The theme in chapter 18 is secrecy. Do you remember we talked about this early on in the novel about how Victor learned how to keep secrets? Yeah. And now he's become a slave of one. That is what happens when you keep secrets. If you're a wife, for example, and you've got these secret credit cards that your husband don't know, doesn't know anything about, and now you're like $30,000 in debt, that secret that you're keeping has now enslaved you. Because what do you wake up thinking about every day? Does he know? That $30,000 in debt. How am I going to pay this off? How am I going to keep him from finding out? Anytime you keep secrets, you become a slave of those secrets. Because now your job and your whole life revolves around what? Secret. Yeah, keeping the secret. And in his situation, the secret that he's keeping is this creature, right? He is now slave to the creature. In fact, later on in a couple of chapters, the creature calls him slave. Things aren't turning out like you th thought that they would. When you get involved in this kind of stuff, it never turns out like you thought it would. Victor goes to England, but he doesn't warn his family. Hey, guys, listen, I've got to go to England. Just want to let you know there's a creature around here who has threatened to kill all y'all. So keep your eyes open. No, he doesn't do that. He leaves. And he leaves them all vulnerable. Even though the creature has, the creature obviously keeps his word. How do we know? Because he killed William. He, he keeps his word. Victor acts only when a stimulus is applied to him. When disaster strikes and it's too late to take precautions, Victor goes, oh, maybe we need to do, you know, if a hurricane was coming, Victor wouldn't watch the news. Victor wouldn't look outside, look at the weather. He would wait till the, the 80 mile, mile an hour wind came and blew all the windows out of the house. He'd go, hey, y'all, maybe we need to put some boards up. He's always like a half a day short, a, a half a minute short. He should have been looking ahead this whole time uh, as to his consequences of his behavior. That's a very immature attitude. Because you'll see immature people, they'll do something, and then they'll try to fix it, and it's too late to fix it. Like they'll get mad and break something and try to fix it. I mean, don't break it. Take some precautions to start with. Okay? Until the creature is happy, Victor will not be happy. It's not going to happen. Because that creature is now his master. And if your master's not happy, it's kind of like in your household. If your mama ain't happy, guess what? Not ain't nobody happy. happy. You ain't going to be happy for sure. Right? Okay. Chapter 19 is Victor's foil. Clairvaux is everything Victor would have been had he not gotten involved with this creature. Clairvaux was successful. He was happy. He, he shows how Victor should have been. When you see the word foil, what you're looking at is somebody who was like you but chose a different path than you. Okay? We see this image of this blasted tree, and we've seen that before. And it goes all the way to the roots of this tree and has basically killed the tree at the roots. It's been severed from the roots. And so Victor is also severed from his roots. Everything he was ever taught... Everything that he stands for is gone. Because he's now made a decision to do what? What decision does he make that is equivalent to selling out his soul? Making a second one. Why is that so horrible? Because he, the first time he did it, not kind of out of ignorance. I mean, he didn't know what the consequences were. But now he's fully aware of what he's doing, and he's doing it anyway. That is straight up wrong. Well, why do we keep saying that it's wrong to make another creature because they don't look the same, so if they multiply again, it's going to be a bad thing. But everything that the monster did was because of the way Victor raised it. Just like somebody has a child, and this child is so bad, I was five. That's not going to stop them from doing things to make another child. You know, they know how the child was made. I mean, they're not stupid, but they made another one, not thinking, oh, well, that child's going to do something the other one did. You know what I'm saying? So we keep saying, oh, he shouldn't make another one because of what the creature did the first time. It was all because of the way Victor just left it. You know, okay. if he would have stayed there and gave him some kind of companionship, maybe the monster would have killed the people. Is he going to do so, that for this new creature? Or is he going to let the new creature be taught by the old creature? 
You understand? He's not going to give any guidance to this new creature. But what is his, what is really the, this, I don't want to say the sin, but what is really the, the moral wrong that he's committing? It's not even creating the, another creature. What is the moral wrong? What did he do wrong the first time? He left it alone. Before that? Created. Okay, why was that wrong? Because he's playing God. Because he's going somewhere he has no business going. He didn't have a right to do that. He did not have a right, as the creature said, to sport with life. That was not his right. You know, it's kind of like people who would do these experiments on, on, um, on the people in the concentration camps, or even the, the fact they were in the concentration camps. Hitler didn't have a right to enslave these people. He didn't have a right to do that. He certainly didn't have a right to experiment on them. There were some heinous experiments done on people in the concentration camps. You know that, right? He didn't have the right to do that. Victor didn't have the right to be doing to be playing God. And yet he's choosing to do it again. I mean, you say he was playing God because he created the monster. What about these people? Like, I mean, it's not like exactly the same accident, but if you think about it, if somebody needs a heart transplant or they're going to die because something happened to their heart, wouldn't you think it was in God's plan for that person to die right then? But if a doctor gives them a heart transplant and gives them a couple more years, you know, isn't that kind of like playing God too? Well, in some cases, have you ever heard of a God complex? Sometimes doctors get God complexes, especially heart surgeons. You can imagine why, right? You're holding life in your hand. You feel that heart beating in your hand. You had the power to start and stop that dude's heart. If, if you don't handle that right, you can imagine what you think you can do. What if he decides who gets to live and who gets to die? Now is that okay? What about what, like, Isn't that what Victor did, though? Yes. But the doctors get to choose, too. I mean. Do the doctors? Now, if, they, if they're all kind of jacked up, they might. But does a doctor look at a patient and go, you know what, you don't deserve to live. I ain't going to fix your heart. I mean, I hope that they would not do that. If they don't have the money, they're not going to just give it to you for free, though, you know? They think, well, you don't have the money to pay for it. We can only keep them on life support for If you were a doctor days. and you could save somebody's life, even if you didn't have the money, would you do it? Yeah. Yeah. That's not everybody. Right. And that's the problem. If you're a doctor and you're a doctor for the right reasons, you're going to be saving people's life regardless. Victor is making decisions about who can live and who can die. That's not his job. That's not his job. When we get to Hamlet, we're going to talk about a similar situation. Okay? Victor, um, he basically abandons his, his commitment because he decides what in chapter 21, or chapter 20, not to do it. He sees the creature looking at him through the window and deliberately begins to destroy what he's making. Knowing what? He finally makes a stand. Okay, good boy, Victor. Good job. Make a stand. But you have just signed your family's death warrant. You see, he's put himself in a position. Either he sells his own soul or he sells out his family. What does he choose to do? Sell out his family. So, see, it's hard to decide if that's a good decision or a stupid decision. Was he being noble and we go, good job, Victor. You're standing up for yourself, man. Good job. Or do we say, Victor, you just sold out your whole family. He's going to kill everybody. What does he continue to believe from here to the end of the novel? Somebody brought it out a while ago. What is he, in his mind, he's convinced himself that the creature's going to kill who? Him. The creature specifically said, I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to kill everybody you care about. And yet Victor's in his mind going, He's just going to kill me. He needs to kill me. I can die. I can take it. But that's not what, that's not what was being said, was it? Okay? Um, and so he makes this stand. He refuses to lose his soul, but he chooses to lose the life of his family. And that puts him in a bad situation. Okay? Tomorrow we'll pick up with, I'll, I'll just really quickly at the beginning of class do the last few chapters. And, um, and then you'll be ready for whatever comes with Frankenstein.